Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about vector blur. Um, the reason I'm going to be talking about vector blur is since cycles is the new hotness, um, a lot of people have been raving over the things that it doesn't have. For example, it does not have vector data, so therefore we cannot do vector blur. It also doesn't have sampled motion blur, so there is no kind of motion blur available for cycles. And that can be a bit annoying sometimes, because uh, let's say I have a scene like this. This was actually, uh, this, uh, this blur you can see over here, this is vector blur. This was done with Blender internal renderer. Let's say though that I want to do this same kind of scene in the cycles renderer. I wouldn't be able to do that because cycles doesn't have any vector blur. Neither does it have sample motion blur. So this scene really wouldn't be anywhere near as good if it didn't have, if it doesn't have this blur. But what else I'm going to be showing you to do today, I'm going to be showing you how to, oh, just close this. I'm going to be showing you how to create a vector blur in cycles in the cycles render engine with the compositor. It's actually quite simple, and uh, I'll just walk you through steps that you need to know how to do it. This is going to be quite a quick tutorial, by the way, so uh, just uh, follow along. I'm going to be speaking. I might be moving a bit too fast for you. It's fairly simple. I'll just stop talking. <laughs> okay, uh, let's just get right into the scene. So uh, here's the default cube. Um, I'm going to add in a plane. Right now I'm in the I'm in the cycles uh, renderer. Let's change it to the Blender internal. Uh, just scaled up, just uh, like this, and to demonstrate the, the motion blur, I'm just going to give this a few keyframes, so move this over here, G. Oh, and by the way, uh, here's a quick tip. If you press uh, G and then shift any axes, like the Z axis, so I'm just going to go shift Z, then you can move it uh, excluding the Z axis, which is quite useful if you don't want to have to go into the front view or the top view and then move it like that. You can just press shift Z or shift X if you don't want to move it on the X axis and uh, it works just fine. So I'm just going to push this over here. I'm going to hit I and hit location. Now I'm going to make our animation 20 frames long. I'm going to go shift left click and then I'm going to go G shift Z and then move our cube over to the end. Now I'm going to hit I location and now we have this animation. Okay now that our scene is set up as far as the Blender internal renderer, we need to set it up for the Cycles renderer. The way we're going to do this is we're going to duplicate the scene and then just change the render engine. So just click this little plus button right here next to Scene, and then click Link Objects. Now you have a new scene with the same data. Now just change it to something obvious like Cycles, and uh, just set up your materials. I'm going to just set up, set it up so that oh yeah, just change it to Cycles. Set it up so it's uh, maybe like, maybe this one can be normal and then the floor can have a different, this is called floor. I'm really not putting any effort into this by the way, so don't judge me. Um, orange is good. Now let's just add in a plane for, actually let's just use the default lamp. We don't need a cycles lamp, it's not going to really change it. So let's just go over here to rendered. And uh, that's good, let's just uh, give some gl some blur to the four reflections. Point two, um, in the middle. That's uh, that's quite good. Um, now what we have to do is render up both our scenes. And uh, before we do that, though, we have to go back into our our original Blender internal scene. By the way, don't worry about this. We're not actually using any materials from the Blender internal. All we're using is the vector data and the z data. So just go back into the layers and then just uh, undo combined and then tick off vector. And now we have vector and z data. Let's just change this to something obvious like vector blur. And then let's go back into our cycles scene one more time and then change this to uh, scene, since this is going to be basically our image. Now, let's just, now we just have to render out both our images. Um, Actually, we can render out in the final comp. Uh, so let's just uh, just follow along with me. Click the plus button again, then click new, and call it comp for composite. And now go into the node editor, the compositor. Click uh, the compositing thing, then uh, use nodes. Compositing thing, okay then. Um, now click cycles for this one. And since we haven't rendered out either of the images, we're not going to see anything yet. And add another render layer. And then uh, click this little scene button right here and click scene. Or, um, huh. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, so this one's scene. Sorry, I was getting confused. 
So this one's uh, scene with the vector blur, see, and this one is cycles with the scene. <laughs> That's kind of confusing. Now I'm going to add in a viewer node, output viewer, and uh, then just put this over here. Uh, let's just render out both the images right now and just do this, and then it should render out both your images. Oh, uh, actually, just to make sure they're both on the same frame, let's just change this to 20, and then change it to 10 so that we get the epitome of the motion blur. Oh, not 10, sorry. 20, then change where you are in the frames to 10. Sorry about that. Just render this out. I'm only using 10 samples since I don't really need any more than that. And uh, it's looking rather appealing. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm talking about. Okay. And uh, now there it is. Now we just have to do the compositing to do the vector blur. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using this Z and speed data from this render layer and apply it to this image. So to do that, we just have to add in a vector blur. So shift A, filter, um, vector blur. Then just plug it in. Just uh, image to the image output to the image in. No, no. Image output to the image input. Image output of the vector blur to the image input of the comp. And then just same for the viewer. Don't really need to tell you. It's fairly simple. And uh, now if you turn on backdrop, you're going to see that we're not actually getting anything. And that's because vector blur needs a Z and a speed data to... Um, use an image. And uh, our Z and speed data is right here, so let's just plug our Z in and then plug our speed in, and we have vector blur. It's actually looking quite good. Um, in case you don't know how to use vector blur, it's fairly simple. Just turn the blur down if you want to turn the amount of blur down. Uh, samples up for a more high quality blur, maybe 50 samples. Uh, I'm going to change the blur to 2 just so you can see it better. And uh, yeah, so there's vector blur. Uh, one of the bugs in vector blur, well, it's not really a bug, it's just something it can't do, is uh, uh, it can't blur out the reflection. So the reflection is just using the reflection of the original image. It's just a bug. It's just um, a thing that we can't really do in vector blur. It's not a big deal. Uh, you could probably uh, figure out a way to get past it if you want to do sampled motion blur. Figure out a way to make that work in this. Um, Yes, anyways, as you can see, we've applied the vector blur to the Cycles render engine, and it's working uh, great. It's using all the same greatness of the, uh, all the same, all, all the great things of the, uh, all the great lighting techniques of the Cycles render engine combined with some of the compositing techniques of the Blender internal. Uh, just so you know, this method of uh, composite layers, I guess I'm just going to call it composite layers, see, we're using two scene layers. Uh, this method can be used for multiple compositing techniques. Like you can use it for any other thing that you, any other kind of compositing that you can't do in the cycles render engine, that, but you can do in the uh, in the uh, Blender internal render engine. I think some. Let me see if I can find any. Like uh, you can do ambient occlusion, or uh, you might be able to get a specular map working in there. Although the lighting, the lighting data would be different. But uh, the point is, you can do all kinds of different things with this method, vector blur especially, because that's one of the big ones. And uh, I'll just get on with the ending. Uh, thanks for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Repetition. Rate, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Okay.